Hello, my dear fan base, followers, subscribers, people of all ages. I'm back with another video. I am trying to stop using excuses as to why I can't make videos every single week. I think I've gotten myself in a little bit of a rut in using this busy period in my life to define or work against what I want to create on YouTube. So I think the last video that I released was my bald head, the revealing of my bald head and talking about that journey and that experience. And so this is going to be my goal moving forward into April and for the rest of the year to record and edit and bump out one video a week. Now you guys need to hold me accountable to that because I could easily slip off and not do it. So what are we going to talk about in this week's video? I had one idea. I didn't really know how to attack it and I tried to film this video yesterday and I was having some issues doing it because so I guess that could be the introduction. I'm going to talk about anxiety more specifically OCD and kind of like how I deal with it because I am diagnosed with OCD and uh, I've been going through a little bit of a rough period here recently where it's been really hard to cope with it. And so yesterday I was like frustrated about a lot of different things and I tried to record a video and there was like I was able to formulate what I wanted to say, but I didn't feel like it was coming out as clear as I wanted it to say. And you know, I never come into these videos with like a script. I come in with an idea, so I kind of know what I want to talk about. But I like to be organic. I like to be in the moment. And I try not to think too much about what I want to say. I just want it to arrive as I'm speaking to you guys. Because um, I think that's the best form of creation. I don't think you can really force those things. It, it helps to have a script every once in a while, but I don't think we need to rely on that. Or at least that's not how I do it. It's just not how I like to do it. Yeah, so I I just had such a rough time like getting out of my own way and just making the video and I was just like super frustrated and I did like two takes and I thought they were both dog shit. So I just scrapped them and I'm here again the next day trying not to give up on myself and make another video on this topic. Now I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter because don't know if people really like the fact that I make like 20 minute videos. Uh, usually all my content is a little bit longer than most people. So I'm trying to figure out ways to trim it down, but let's get into it. Let's talk. Everybody I think can attest to experiencing general levels of anxiety and fluctuating levels of anxiety throughout their life. Um, and then you have people that are maybe a step above that and start to get into the category of having like a general anxiety disorder. Um, and I'm not saying that OCD people are then a step above that, but then you have obsessive people who have reoccurring similar thoughts, intrusive thoughts, thoughts that they cannot shake, things that they literally obsess day and night over. And I think that they might be a step above. And so you know, that's why it's important to have these distinctions is because humans all experience anxiety, but I think there are people that have a lot harder of a time managing it because of, you know, whatever circumstances they've been through in their life that have shaped their perspectives on how they relate to like stress and things that they go through. And so for me, this is where we're getting into OCD territory, but like, so as we approach the OCD territory, what does that look like for people? And this is, this is really a hard subject because it's hard to describe and people are also very different. So like, I think there's also stages of OCD. There are people that claim to be OCD because they like to keep their apartment and their physical surroundings all organized. And certainly that is a part of OCD. I will not disagree with that. I mean, if you look around my apartment, you'll probably see that I like to keep things tidy. But I think that that's very much like the base level of OCD. And I think also fits into 
another category of just people's personalities. Like if you're a tidy, organized person, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have OCD. When I think of OCD, I think of what, how it affects me and the fact that I get wrapped up in thoughts and I have thoughts that I start obsessing over and then these thoughts, these scenarios, these hypotheticals, the imaginary elusive mind that generates anxiety ramps up and it's like the more that you give in and fear those things that are starting to arise in your mind, that's where anxiety starts to grow a clamp on you and, and it won't release you from its grip and then you find yourself in this situation where you're like, okay, well, maybe, you know, I'll just say in my case, like a week ago, I had some things that happened that uh, put me in a state of anxiety and I started to kind of like freak out about it and now I find myself here like a week later really struggling. Um, I'm a lot better at coping with my anxiety and my OCD now than I have been in prior years, but it is still hard to, sometimes it's very hard to negate that, to, to push that to the side. And I also should say that it's, I think with anxiety and OCD, like you can't really push those things to the side. And I learned that as the years have gone on because that's what I used to do. But now I'm super open, I'm super honest with myself and transparent about whatever it is that I'm feeling. And I think that's necessary because you cannot bury the feelings that you're having, whether they're irrational or not, you know, because a lot of things that go on in the mind that generate and create that anxiety are usually imaginary. They're usually just made up. And the purpose of making a video like this is not only to help other people because I'm, I'm damn well sure that if you haven't experienced anxiety in your entire life, but leading up to 2020 and 2021, I'm sure there are people that have started to experience anxiety um, that they've never had before. So, and then the people that were already anxious probably got even more anxious. I'm making this video because I am in a rough place and I, I do want to help other people that experience anxiety, but I also make these videos for myself. Like there's uh, just because like yesterday, I could tell that I was off and I was not on the wall and I haven't been for like the last week, but that's not going to stop me from trying to make a video and talking about this stuff in hopes that it's going to get better because I know it will get better. And that's the other thing that I want to point out with anxiety, OCD, but then going through these periods in our lives where it's kind of like that negative cycle that we get ourselves in, whether it be depression, anxiety, or just something tough that you're dealing with it's okay to acknowledge it and it's okay to understand it and admit that this is a really tough time and I'm not enjoying it and I'm not enjoying myself, but you have to distinguish that it's not you and it's not your identity. Like you should not identify yourself with the anxiety or with this period in time that is really harsh on you because when you fall into that rut of identifying with this situation as if it is you, that's when it literally gains power and control over you and then you can't move and then you become the anxiety and then you become the depression and that's just not a good place to be. That's not a good thought to have because then you relinquish all control. And sometimes, you, again, like I'm saying for this last week, I didn't really feel like I had a whole lot of control over my anxiety, but I had to admit to it. I had to, I have to talk about it every day. I have to think about it. I have to write it out in my journal. It's been like a week. It's been a little bit over a week since I've been dealing with this most recent, like I, I like to call them spells of anxiety because sometimes it could be days. Sometimes it's just a day. Sometimes it's a few hours. Sometimes it's weeks, you know, and then, I mean, even at my lowest points, it's been months and, and outside of that, you know, even longer. So it's important to remind yourself that this is not your identity and this does not define who you are. And you have to know that you're going to get through it. Life is an ebb and flow system that is constantly changing from moment to moment. Like you can feel sad sometimes, but you don't have to give in to your sadness. You don't have to do sad things. 
you can feel happy. You don't have to further travel along these emotions because then it makes it a lot harder to come back to a center. And this is why I'm starting to believe more and more like society's taught us something wrong in the way that we handle our emotions and how we go about our lives is like, I envy the people that are able to stay grounded and never allow themselves to get too high or too low. It's like they experience good things in their lives and they experience hard times in their lives, but they're always able to manage their emotions and bring themselves back to a stable point. And that's where I'm trying to get more and more as I get older, because when I was younger, you get super elated in those happy moments and then you get super down when things are hard and I think it's hard to, I, I think it's hard to, it's harder to process what's going on and it's harder to rationalize and detach. So that's why I think it's good for people to stay in that middle ground most of the time because then they never, then they're able to witness what's going on a lot more clearly than identifying. And I've had such a hard week in trying to continually remind myself that like every day that like this is not me this is not define me this does not determine who i am i'm just going through a rut i'm going through a rough period and you have to identify how you are contributing to that because there were a few things that i were doing that were a little boneheaded and had turned into bad habits and I didn't realize that was making my anxiety worse. You have to identify those things. A lot of these things slip under the rug and go on this unconscious level of not being able to identify what the problem is. But like you have to you have to look retrospectively at the week or how long you've been anxious and be like, all right, like what happened? Like what put me there? And then what are triggers to like what are the things that are going on in your life right now that may be adding to that? So for me it's like it's school. School's been very stressful. Uh, as I talked about on my last video, you know, I'm pretty much under a month towards graduating. I still have to take a summer course. I'm no longer taking a May term course. I'm moving that course to the summer so I can have a little bit of a break before I have to do one more class. And I think it's healthy because I'm finding my, everybody, if any of you guys are in college, everybody can uh, attest to this and say that it always gets harder as the semester goes on uh, it's, it's a lot harder to find motivation and you start procrastinating a lot more. And it, it really depends on like the type of work that you're doing. I'm sure there are a lot of people that don't really care for what sort of assignments and projects they have to do in their classes. And, and that's probably part of it, you know, is that I don't really enjoy <laughs> the material in the courses. Um, but yeah, that fatigue and, and that burnout. And for me, uh, kind of relating back to this whole OCD thing is... It's really hard sometimes to not let the OCD get in the way. And I'm trying to look at it and embrace it as something that's positive because everything in life is a double-edged sword. Everything about your personality, like if you're creative, uh, you know, if you're an extrovert, all those things have pros and cons. And so I think a lot of my life and then maybe the last few years, I had looked at OCD as a bad thing which it certainly can, it can get to the point where it's debilitating and I really do sometimes have to lean on others to find a way to regain my composure and get out of it. But there are bright aspects to OCD, like I think that's what makes me so creative and, and this want and this desire to get better and improve my content and the things that I put out there for you guys. Like I'm always looking at all the fine details of what makes a video good. So. You have to embrace that. You have to, you have to understand that these things, although at points in your life feel like they're limiting you, but also anxiety, OCD. Sometimes they're just really trying to tell you something that something is off, and there's something that you need to pay attention to and fix. And for me, like I said, there were things that I were doing that were contributing to this. So since then, since I've been able to identify what was my fault, I said, okay, no more. We're not doing that, you know. And I've talked to my therapist. I've talked to other people. I've been able to verbalize a lot more clearly like how I'm feeling. I wrote in my journal yesterday and despite the negative spiral that I fell into and was discouraging me to not like follow through with my video yesterday on the same subject, here I am again the next day making a video and trying to work through it. And it's, it's still hard. Like I can still see in my mind that I partly will lose concentration and focus and attention on what I want to say as I'm talking to the camera. 
So I apologize if that eye contact is not always there, but here's the thing. It's like, when you identify those things, when you admit it, when you feel it, when you let the anxiety course through your system and work its way out and, and, and work with it, it's like an exchange. It's like, okay, this thing hurts sometimes, but we, we make this pain that we find in our lives, that comes into our lives and suffering and all that and the imagination associated with anxiety and OCD, we let that be a lot worse than it needs to be instead of actually going in there and talking to it and speaking with it and understanding where it's coming from and why it's arising. And then at that point, really, I mean, that's usually where it gets better, you know, like there's still probably levels of anxiety to it, but it starts to trickle down because you're actually starting to look at the things that are causing you to be anxious. And I get it, like sometimes it's not always easy to identify what is making you anxious. Sometimes I get anxious and I literally have no clue why I'm anxious. You know, I deal with social anxiety, general anxiety disorder. Uh, there's probably some PTSD in there from, you know, traumatic events. But when I talk about this stuff, it's like, and as I get older, I realize like what, type of person doesn't have some form of trauma in their lives. Like even if you had the most perfect childhood set of parents that took care of you and nurtured you and showed you what a good relationship was like, showed you how good communication existed. I mean, for those kids, yeah, you had a really good model, but at the same time, you could argue that they were a little bit too sheltered to the brutal nature of life. And once they get out there and they get older and they're away from their parents, they're going to suffer. So everybody has been screwed over by their parents in some way when their parents were raising them and it's nothing against the parents because a lot of parents just don't even know what they're doing but everybody's carrying around with them some form of baggage trauma weight you know anxiety uh maybe minor levels of depression everybody has things insecurities things that they don't like about themselves so in an attempt to talk about the subject which is it's very hard to describe anxiety and OCD because again, for so many people, it could mean so many different things and everybody has a different relationship with their anxiety. But I'm figuring out at 24 now and going through this and you know, freaking out, going off the rails there for a little bit, probably still am, I realize I need to change my relationship with anxiety and I need to look at my OCD differently because it doesn't define me these ruts, these spells, it's not me. It may be a particular situation or things that are happening around me. And usually it's changes too. Changes for me uh, always spark about an OCD dialogue in my head. So I do have a lot of changes going on right now. I have a lot of uncertainty of not knowing what's gonna happen once the semester's over. Um, starting a new relationship, um, not getting as many hours as I'd like at my job. Um, you know, distancing myself from family members, um, doing all this crap on my own in my own apartment, becoming more independent. There's a lot going on in my life. There's a lot changing just recently, just last week, turning 24. So it, it kind of feels like as I'm saying all this and I've made this video and I'm reaching a conclusion, there's my answer. Uh, to make this fight a little less harder on myself is getting out of my own way, which is really hard to do and to stop overthinking things. but to change your relationship with the anxiety. I think once we can do that, it's not going to have such a detrimental effect on us. And I think we can get out of these spirals, these spells, these ruts in a much quicker fashion because we've learned how to identify what's going on. Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. Let's acknowledge it. And you have your time to freak out. You have your time to worry. I've allowed myself to do that in the confines of my own apartment. It's nice to get out. I should probably get out a little bit more and enjoy the sunshine. But when I'm going through that, I don't want other people to necessarily see me in that fashion. So that's all I really have. I, I hope that makes sense. Like I said, it's been really hard this last week to pull it together. I feel like I'm still... I feel like I'm still a little bit on edge and, and trying to figure things out, but I feel like, again, no matter how you're feeling, it's important to show up each day, and no matter how many times you get discouraged, keep going. So with these YouTube videos, I'm trying to come out once a week because I've let that become my 
excuse. Like, yes, it has been a stressful semester. A lot's been going on, a lot to deal with. Like I said, a lot of changes, but it is an excuse. I could find more time. I could utilize the free time that I do by maybe just, if I'm scrolling on my phone or watching YouTube videos, which is helpful, uh, I can use that time and put that into my business because I had said on the last video, I wanna be doing more podcasts. I wanna be doing more YouTube videos. I have ideas, there's things that I would like to create, so start doing that. And even if a video doesn't live up to your perfectionistic OCD standards, just know that it is good, it's content, it's it's making room for something else to grow. I think, I think it's important to keep going. So anyways, that's all I really have for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit of a switch up in pace, you know, I change around these topics quite often, so I hope you're just sticking with me and enjoying what I'm putting out there. Like I said earlier in the video, these videos are for you guys, they're also for me. Like, we're all in this together, and I'm hoping that on this channel I can start creating conversations with people with whatever issues they're having by seeing me, seeing me express myself. So, anyways, if you're new to the channel, like I always say, like this video, subscribe to the channel. We're going to get after it in April. Confident in saying that. So thank you guys for the support. I love you guys. I'll see you soon.